Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. Today's topic, Cherubim, the Ark of the Covenant and the Gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're going to go to Exodus 25, verses 17 through 20. Uh, as a scripture reference, you shall make a mercy seat of pure gold, two and a half cubits long and one and a half cubits wide, and you shall make two cherubim of gold, of hammered work shall you make them on the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherub on the one end and one cherub on the other end. Of one piece with the mercy seat, you shall make the cherubim on its two ends. The cherubim shall spread out their wings above, overshadowing the mercy seat with their wings, their faces to one another. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubim be. So the mercy seat is the cover or the lid for the Ark of the Covenant. And it's the Hebrew word or the Hebrew word for mercy seat is Kaparoth. And per Strong's concordance, it means mercy seat, place of atonement the golden plate of propitiation, substitution, on which the high priest sprinkled the seat seven times on the day of atonement, symbolically reconciling Jehovah and his chosen people. On the lid were two golden cherubim facing each other whose outstretched wings came together. So um, Kaparoth comes from Kofor in the Hebrew, and it means pr propitiatory or su substitution is the idea. Um, the mercy seat or the lid of the ark is a substitution for the covering of sin. Now remember, cherubim are physically present on covering, protecting, and observing the mercy seat. Take a look at Leviticus 16 verses 15b through 16 and bring its blood inside the veil and do with its blood as he did with the blood of the bull and sprinkle it on the mercy seat and in front of the mercy seat. He shall make atonement for the holy place because of the impurities of the sons of Israel and because of their transgressions in regard to all their sins. <clears throat> and thus he shall do for the tent of meeting which abides with them in the midst of their impurities. For God, the shedding of innocent blood on the mercy seat is a satisfactory substitution for sin. Only the high priest can make sacrifice in the presence of God. And that brings us to Jesus Christ is our high priest. And we get that from um, Hebrews 4, verse 14. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. So, you know, what role do the cherubim play in all of this? And Matthew gives a physical description of one of the angels at the tomb of Christ the bean is clearly an imposing looking figure. The guards were literally scared stiff and rocked at their core. Matthew 28 verses 3 and 4, his appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. And Luke describes their appearance, that being the angels. The women who followed Jesus had a similar response as the guards. They were mortified. Luke 24, verses 4 through 5, while they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. As the women bowed their faces to the ground in terror, the two men asked them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? Now at the core issue, angels bear witness to humanity, the gospel message. This is the reality of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Matthew confirms his death and burial and resurrection. John picks up from Matthew and informs of the burial and alludes to the resurrection. Luke closes with confirmation of the resurrection. And they are all quoting angels. Angels present the evidence according to the gospel accounts. So we're going to take a look at all three of these. Matthew 28 verses 5 and 6. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, for he has risen, just as he said, come see the place where he was lying. And the gospel account of John 20, verses 11 and 12, But Mary, Magdalene, was standing outside the tomb weeping, and so, as she wept, she stooped and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been lying.
And lastly, we're going to take it Luke 24, verse 6. He's not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was in Galilee. And that's a quote from an angel. So, um, you know, also in John 20, verses 11 and 12, angels were present with the resurrected Jesus. Uh, John 20, verse 14, having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Well, Jesus was in the company of angels. Um, also going to take a look at uh, Deuteronomy 19, Verse 15, a single witness shall not rise up against a man on account of any iniquity or any sin which he has committed. On the evidence of two or three witnesses, a matter shall be confirmed. And this is part of the law. God the Father sent angels to earth for confirmation of Christ's good news. For heavenly legal purposes, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection are established observable facts. At least two, if not three, angels confirm the events. Matthew 28 accounts for one angel. John 20 observes two angels. Uh, angels present, or angels present and confirm the fact of the gospel. So multiple angels verified this. So God's legal standard has been satisfied. And, you know, tying it all together, Jesus Christ is the mercy seat. This gift is received only by faith. Nothing you can do. Romans 3.25, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. And so the, you know, the idea, Jesus is a propitiation, the mercy seat propitiation, the word for mer mercy seat propitiation, kofer. So, Angels authenticate and substantiate our good news. So, you know, if you appreciate this, please feel free to check out paulthepoke.com. You go up here to the far right, uh, click in this area where the blue bar is, type in your name, email address. You can receive a notification every time we come out with something. And then also this will be categorized under angels. Click on angels. We have several articles uh, regarding angels also would be categorized under gospel. Click on the gospel and you can read many posts on the good news. That is Jesus. So maybe not a bad idea with the way the old world's going. You know, as Jesus himself said, when you see these things come to pass, come to pass, start to come to pass, look up your redemption draws near. So we're watching it happen. Appreciate you guys following along. Hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye.